You're listening to the Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. Yeah, it's a mouthful. For more great shows like the one you're about to enjoy, visit electronicmediacollective.com. And now, our feature presentation. Well, this is kind of a special episode. I mean, for everybody who is listening right now, Eric, we're going to go down this rabbit hole together. Something that we've never done before. Uh, Today, we're talking about Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Eric has seen the movie. I have not. Eric, you know why I didn't see this movie last night? Uh, yeah, because you hate Benedict uh, Cumberbatch. He, he he will always be schmog to me and nothing else. He has a firm, uh, uh, Jordan has a firm uh, stance on, on him. I don't know why. Um, I think it's because Benedict has personally uh, slept with half of Jordan's family. It's a weird thing, but again, Sorcerer Supreme does what he wants. Does what he wants, when he wants, who he wants. And that, is that the Doctor Who part of it? Yes. Wonderful. Mm. So, so Eric, um, a little behind the scenes here. Sometimes I like to spoil behind the scenes for our people who are listening. Is we always record on a Wednesday morning, and we release the episode on Thursdays. Well, I go see the movies on Tuesdays because in my area, it's on Tuesdays. It's five dollars for a ticket, and you get a free bag of popcorn. Who would not do that? So yes, the movie came out last week, but instead of spending ten dollars, I wait till Tuesday, the day before the review, to see it. Uh, stop me if you've heard this before, people. Um, Jordan's furnace has been on the fritz, and yesterday, one hour before I'm supposed to leave to go to the movie, uh, my uh, well, my condenser pump decides to explode literally, and inside my furnace room, I have a flood. <laughs> Yep, that's, of that course sucks. it does. Of course. So I uh, call a buddy of mine. He comes over, gets it done within 30 minutes. I'm just standing there with my jaw open like, what? What is it? What is it? You know, he's just, oh, this is easy. Sloom, bam, boom, bam, doom, done. Right? So what, Jordan, you're trying to say is that today's episode will be brought to you by Swanton Heating and Cooling. Give him a call today for all your heating and cooling needs. Yeah, the company doesn't exist. This is, this is a buddy of mine who, <laughs> who did it on the side. But, I mean, the reason why we still wanted to do the show, everybody, is because, well, I mean, I kind of thought it would be kind of a cool concept. Um, I was going to go see the movie. I had, a, I had a furnace issue, air conditioner issue. I couldn't go see the movie. Eric has already seen it. I'm very strong in my opinions of Marvel. We're going to do some ranking today. But for this episode... Eric is going to tell me what has happened in the movie, and you guys are going to get my honest gut reaction to what he tells me. And then I will give me uh, well, give me give me a few months here because I'm going to give my popcorn rating for this one, and then I'll revisit it when it comes out on Disney Plus and tell you my real review. I think that's fair. Yeah, uh, if we can come back to it, because I'm sure we're going to be talking. More Marvel, of course. This isn't going to be the last one. Right. This is not going to be the last one. Um, speaking of Marvel, before we get to Doctor Strange, um, I wake up a day at I wake up every day at five o'clock. I'm used to it, and this is going with Marvel. So I, I wake up this morning. I'm laying in bed reading the news on my phone, and I stumble upon. Can't believe this is happening. Don't know if you know this, Eric. Set photos have been released of a. Uh, and, and what Taylor Johnson, Quicksilver dude? What's his name? Aaron uh, Taylor Johnson. Oh, oh yes, the uh, yeah. The, the, you say Quicksilver, and there's two Quicksilvers now. So the MCU Quicksilver, uh, but yes, and uh, Kickass. Yes, yes, uh, yes. yeah. These are three names. The other one being Evan Peters, by the way. Evan Peters, who I love from American Horror Story. Anywho, set photos have been released. Mister Aaron Ter- Taylor Johnson is filming the movie Craven the Hunter. What? Part of part of the Venom verse. This has nothing to do with MCU. This is Venom verse. He is playing playing Craven. The set photos got released today. Now, uh, going into Doctor Strange, I think that it's already uh, difficult because heaven forbid anyone who had not seen WandaVision going into this, you really uh, benefited a lot from watching that series before going into this. Hundred percent. Anyone who didn't. Probably has to play a little bit of catch up. So, with that being said, Sony doing their Venom verse or Venom, whatever you want to call it, uh, it 
seems like it's going to just be adding a whole lot more onto a pile that's already getting pretty big. Yeah, no, this is the third attempt, right? You had Venom, Morbius, and now you have Craven. I saw, and I, I, this was not confirmed, at least I, maybe it was online. I, I really hope it wasn't. Um, but it seems like it's something that Sony would do, that they have released kind of a Marvel phase-esque plan, and it will include the workings for a Sinister Six, or even a, a Spider Wars uh, type movie. I, I, that's really what they're going. They're really going hard in the the Spider part of Marvel. Well, that's exactly what they're doing, obviously, right? I mean, like, they're doing Venom, who's going to be the leader, right? And now you got Morbius, and now they're introducing Kraven the Hunter. So, I mean, this is this is going to be interesting, uh, but that was not on my plan to talk to you about that today. But I was like, what? Kick-Ass is playing Kraven? Well, okay. you know, the, the other thing is, too, is that both Marvel and Sony are both putting a lot into like the symbiotes in this like they're investing a lot into it but they've made mention on both parts and easter eggs on both parts both in series and movies of a lot of the symbiote existence and um oh god why can't i think of the leader of the symbiotes for, uh, right now it's not current it, uh was he in the first one it's like null or something like that is uh, oh, he was not the dude from the first one. Not the oh backup. no, no, no! This is the, he is he is the, he is before he is the creator. He is before there was there was everything. There was him. He was yeah. Uh, this, the symbiotes are are, are a, a huge ancient uh, race that that like they go they transcend the multiverse time. They are they are big. So I I don't know that might be you thought the multiverse was messed up. Wait till you hear about the symbiotes. Yeah, it's, okay, let's talk about the multiverse. So, of course, I've seen the trailers, right? And I haven't seen the movie one more time. But uh, when I watched the trailer, especially when we went to go see movies in theaters so far this year and the trailer would play, I, I was like, man, I, I, I think i got to take some acid. Because the movie, <laughs> I mean, like, especially that one slow-mo shot where Doctor Strange's face turns into little cubes, you know, he's, like, breaking apart. I'm just like, what is this? Um... And I'm curious. So let's just go right, right off the bat. Since you've seen this movie and I have not, and we're going to get my gut reaction, where are we starting off at? Are we starting off that? How about this? If if you don't like this, you don't have to do this, but we'll try this. Is Scarlet Witch the villain in this movie? Yes. Now, before you answer, is she the good person? The Doctor Strange comes to ask for her help. And then she turns to be bad, but at the end of the movie, before credits roll, she's good again. No. So okay, good. Thank God. So Whew. this is kind of a it, it, this is kind of like a, a weird happening because it starts the movie starts quick into the in the multiverse. It doesn't start in our reality or after the events of. It starts in the multiverse, and it starts with uh, uh, America Chavez and Espanol Strange, I guess, running from a demon. And it, one thing I will say, by the way, that this movie uh, is visually gorgeous. Like, I, we say that a lot about, but this thing was, like, I'd say a good 95% of this movie is all green screen. It, it, is, uh, it is a lot of pretty lights. It is a lot of pretty pixels, big explosions, colorful explosions, big kabooms here, a lot of, a lot of kapows here. It is, it looks, it's a comic book movie. For, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but at the same part, it's Sam Raimi. So those big kablooies and kapows, uh, uh, mix that in with some blood and violence in there too, because that's what happens uh, in a in a few parts of it too. Anyway, we're starting off big, and it's it's separate. Like it's not like again after the events of or anything, uh, or, or everything's post blip. By the way. Uh, or post snap and everything coming back, so they, they refer to that a lot, and I, I like that they do that. Um, after the multiverse, uh, uh, this little event with America Chavez happens, and this big, uh, this big demon chasing her, uh, it kills Espanol Strange because they're they're after this book that is like the the all powerful good book that will uh, you know help everybody, and um, yeah, it's just a uh, it, it's a it's a weird. 
because because again, like a lot's happening here. Right. Okay. And um, you wonder, like, okay, they're after the demon, they're after the book, they're after the whatever the hell. Uh, uh, Doctor Strange, Espanol Strange, says that, oh, well, the only way to defeat this is that I got to take your power and uh, – because you can't control it. America can't control her power. Her only power, by the way, being that she can um, bounce between multiverse. That's her, that's her only power, uh, and, it's, and it's a useful one to have. So when you say multiverse, are you talking like into the Spider Verse kind of movie where it's like, yep, okay, so we got like Spider Pig as an example for this. Sure. So you say Espinal Strange, so you're saying that there's a Mexican Doctor Strange? Uh, yeah, I'm sure that there's a different uh, reality in, in the whole thing, but he speaks Spanish and uh, as does she. Uh, they're okay, sp- they're speaking it to each other, and um, he has to make the call. Uh, that says, like, hey, I have to take your power because I need to control it. You can't control it. That's what they're after, and it's not safe in your hands. It's better in my hands. Cue betrayal eyes, you know, because he has to kill her. And yeah. right before that happens, the demon obviously kind of saves her, I guess, by killing him. But who's this demon? So we find out later uh, oh. that, that the demon was summoned because uh, after this whole traumatic thing... Um, America Chavez, uh, uh, who can't control her power, uh, it triggers with a very extreme situations, and her and Dead Strange are sucked into a different multiverse, and then we get our Doctor Strange waking up from a dream. Oh, okay. Where's the last time we seen Strange? Spider, uh, Spider-Man, No Way Home. So this takes place after No Way Home? Yes. Okay, so No Way Home happens, and then this happens. Yes. And he wakes up in a dream. Yes, he wakes up in a dream, but he knows it's not a dream. He knows that he is he is his dreams are of other other realities. And uh, okay. and they explain that that your dreams are just glimpses of you into your alternate selves. Oh, well, here we go with the cross side stuff. Um <laughs> it, it 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 sounds like sounds like Doctor Strange is like the number one big bad superhero, right? Like is he more powerful than Captain Marvel? Oh here? yeah, absolutely. I I've always put Strange as S tier. He's he's probably the the strongest of the he's definitely the strongest of the Avengers. Um yeah, I I I'd say I put him up there as as probably the top. Gotcha. All right, I have another question for you because I know we're kind of jumping over the place. So you're doing good so far. That's this okay. Is uh, Doctor Strange is jumping all over the place in this movie. Right. So we find out at the end of Wanda WandaVision, which Eric has said, and I implore you because I knew that going into this one, that if you who are listening have not seen WandaVision at all, probably a good idea before seeing this in theaters. It's not that long of a series. Binge watch it in a couple of days, then go see it. I think you probably be very glad you did from what Eric is telling me. But at the end of WandaVision, you know, I'm going with this. It was, oh, she is the Scarlet Witch. And then she gets her Scarlet Witch get up. So I'm assuming it's Scarlet Witch, Scarlet Witch, Scarlet Witch. That's all they ever say in this movie, right? So, yeah. Uh, obviously, they, they find out the threat. Uh, Doctor Strange reaches up from his dream. And it's just like, holy shit, that was, that was creepy, man. That was a b- b- bit more of a dream. And he goes out to his day-to-day to find out that, oh, that wasn't a dream, uh, that it was probably real, and the girl that was in his dream is now in his reality and has brought some sort of mystical uh, demon after her to try to try to kill her. Um, and so after he resolves that, saves her, he's asking questions like, what the hell? Um, in which she kind of fills him in about everything. Oh, excuse okay. me. Okay. Yeah, uh, and th- 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 part of this too is that uh, when he saves her, like he was at uh, um, Rachel McAdams's wedding. You know, oh, Rachel McAdams is in this movie. Yeah, she she's a big part in this movie. Who is she? She's the love interest uh, uh, to Doctor Strange. Ah, uh, was she in the first one, the first Strange movie? Yes. So she has not been in a Marvel movie since Strange One. Correct. And she's not marrying Strange. She's marrying some other dude. Correct. Why is she even in this movie then? She's because a, she was. She is a big part in this movie. She's uh, a big part in this movie. Yeah. Okay. Yes. She okay. is a, a big part in this movie uh, because she is the big. She is the, uh, the the fulcrum to Doctor Strange's pivoting story. What does she do? Um. Well, she is the one that says that lets him know that 
you aren't the star. Like, you want everything to be about you always, and that's why bad shit happens to you. Because you don't let anyone else in. And she was the person the entire time that was just like, I'm helping, you know, I'm trying to help you, but I can't if you won't let me. I believe that the the phrase that she uses is, you always wanted to hold the knife, or you always want to hold the knife as the doctor. You never let anybody else do anything. And so that's... And he realizes it later on because the big part of the story is that he loses her. He doesn't get to marry her. He can't have everything. He always wants to be in charge. And when that happens, and he loses something, or something happens that it's his fault, he lets himself... Um, beat himself up over it. It's it's a big part of it, of, of him learning. I call shenanigans on that. I mean, that sounds ridiculous. If you're going to have Rachel McGams' character being the first Doctor Strange movie, which came out, what, 30 years ago at this point now, might as well, right? Sure. Uh, he doesn't even talk about her. Her name's not even mentioned. There's not even a picture of her throughout the rest of the movies that she's been blipped or whatever. We know nothing about her. So why make a sequel with her in it and be a big focal point on his morality makes no sense to me. He didn't even care the past few movies that we've seen him. Hey, why bring her back? You're, you're right. But again, like it's because of her, him. Like he is the big, he is the main star of the movie, and he he needs to learn in this movie right. because at to this point still he hasn't. And what's even uh, what this movie does even better about that is that it shows. That in every other universe, he's still like that. In every other universe, he still loses the girl. He never gets her. In every other universe, he comes out as a hero, but at the cost of something else. Because he needs to hold the knife. He needs to be in charge. He realizes throughout this movie, uh, by seeing in, in different multiverses, uh, different in the different parts of him, that, oh, geez, that I'm doing this wrong. I've only been doing about uh, assuming that everyone else is incapable of doing it and that I'm here because I'm the only one who can make it right. When he realizes later on, like, oh, geez, I'm I'm putting this this impossible standard on people that I can't even hold to myself. That's what he's saying. And, and I know we're digging a little bit deeper early on to the Marvel movie here, but that that this is what the entire movie is about is him. I wanted shenanigans. I wanted madness in the multiverse. I wanted some some messed up stuff. I wanted some monsters. And albeit that it was there, whoops, excuse me, making a mess here. Uh, and albeit that that was there, it just wasn't the forefront. It wasn't highlighted as well as the development was. Well, was this was this heavily edited? Because we've heard for a couple of years that this was going to be the first, now probably marketing, but We've been hearing for the past couple of years this was supposed to be like the first rated R MCU movie. This movie was just so extreme. So is that why it's kind of choppy? I mean, like, is it is it is it edited poorly? You think with I, all those things that you want? No, I I think not edited poorly. I think that Sam Raimi wanted this to be something, and then Disney Marvel had to put the put the the brakes on. Like, whoa, 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 hold on. Remember, we're we're trying to go for an audience here, and Sam Raimi's. Just like, oh, yeah, so when can we kill everybody? We can kill everybody now? Now? And he's like, well, hold on, Raimi, we're not trying to actually kill anybody in this movie. He's like, yeah, but we're going to kill people, right? It's like, all right, Sam, well, well, if we let you kill a few people, will you be happy? And he goes, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Can I add blood? And so, like, those parts, you could tell were right. edited. You could tell that, that some parts of Sam really wanted to show it in this movie, and they... Probably had to <laughs> calm him down a bit. Gotcha. Well, it, hey, they learned from Ryan Johnson, right? Well, Disney's learned. I yes and yes and no. So after this point, like we are finding a bit more about America Chavez and like who she is and where she's from. Um, they added in a, a lot of the, uh, uh, I, I guess for. I guess striking, I guess, the, the wokeness record of it now, but not only is she l kind of all-inclusive into one thing. She's LGBTQ, she's a um, person of, of color, right? She's a younger lady. So it's just kind of like all that into into one. And um, I don't know if that was necessary or not, but it's it's nice to, to, to have it. 
I know that a lot of other places were really making a shine of that, and it's like it's not really a big deal because the only mention they have of it was maybe a pin on her lapel. They didn't really go into it, and if you're bothered by if you're bothered by that, it's just representation. And Marvel oh, does a good yeah. job of of representing, but I think a lot of people are just I don't know why they feel it necessary that their superheroes have to have a certain code. Um, um, I will add something to that, and uh, what I mean is, how I want to add to this is that isn't this isn't this standard though? There is one little thing, like like you said, like a pin, right? Mm -hmm. But then marketing, not marketing, but internet is trying to make it say, hey, this next Marvel movie's like broke back Marvel, like watch out, you know? And it's just like, no, no, yeah. it's, it never is. Every time there's a major issue, uh, when it comes to political issues that are going on in the world or in this country. And there's, and something's like that in the movie, people like to flip out. So I've heard about the controversy of this character and I was like, what's Eric going to say? And then you tell me, Oh, it's just like a pin on her coat. Oh, really? Like, yeah. so everybody's freaking out over nothing. The, the only other part it, it, they would show is that in her backstory, it showed her a blip of her origin, a nice little one minute thing in her world with her being a kid in the field and she has two moms and she gets stung by a bee and, and as a kid stung by a bee it it, it triggered her you know it, it was traumatic okay. and when she got stung by a bee that was when her powers first activated first awakened and when she did that uh it it's like a big star that the power it's oh, the portal is like this big star uh, that opens up and it just kind of sucks anything close by in like a black hole and when that first happened it took both of her moms into into another dimension nobody no death as we know uh huh and they don't talk about it other than that they just say that the parents are gone she believes that they're dead strange but says, nobody no death though strange basically says that he says everything except nobody no death but he's just like oh no if, if you don't know they're dead so that doesn't mean that they're dead and they're fly, probably floating somewhere else we'll find them but like that's that's it 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 was not anything that like took away from the character added to the character it was fine like because the central part of the character was her powers was her was her where she was going and like why they were targeting her it wasn't her her story or her origin or anything it was that you have a power we want it and that anything that we got that happened to gloss over some sort of social issue which again really wasn't a big deal for anything it was because the focal point was her powers right her powers what she could do so two things first thing is you're telling me to stop this review now, go outside, get stung by a bee, and maybe I'll become Bee Man. <laughs> it's uh, you know how in Deadpool they had said that mm. everyone has a power, or like the X gene, that you just need to have right. something to awaken it. Right, 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 right. So and that's her, what happened with so her. That's what her is that she had it, and then she gets stung by a bee, and it freaked her out. It's a kid, you know. She's it's probably fine. Like five, four or five years old, and you know, ah, yeah. got, and then she kids get stung out. by bees. Yeah, I get you. The second thing is, um, I would like to get this off my chest so we can move on because you were talking about it, and it popped in my head because I've seen this movie recently, and it just kind of shows you how uh, I'm not trying to. It, it's 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 trying to show you how interesting the times are nowadays. Uh, a movie that was on TV just recently, and my wife's never seen it, uh, Viva Vendetta was on TV recently. That movie came on, what, in 07, 08? And I think you know where I'm going with this, right? There's a big, huge part in the middle of the movie where Natalie Portman gets captured, mm -hmm. and then she gets all those 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 notes, and it was from a woman, and, and she's a lesbian lover, and the government comes in and separates them and puts them in camps. Like, that's a hardcore horrible thing to watch and it's so moving too with it um that sounds like that's what people were expecting to happen in this movie but yeah they, but they well, didn't you, the thing they did with it is that they did it as normal like it was just right wasn't highlighted it right. was just a normal thing and that's how this should be it shouldn't be rammed down people's throats it should just be like yeah, how you see in, in commercials now. It's just a casual, normal thing. Oh, it's a family eating Cheerios. That's it. 
like yeah, focus stop on, out. on the product or you know you know on her powers that's that's the focus the focal point anything else that you took away from it is your problem right and well speaking of with my problems let's continue on with this movie Yes, I want to know, again, we're jumping over the place like Strange does, is Professor X, is Patrick Stewart in this movie? So, uh, hold on, we'll, we'll get there. Oh, you're going to make me wait, you son of a... Okay. So, he's at Rachel McAdams' uh, 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 wedding. Hold on, i got to pull up her, hold up her, uh, all the names. I usually have these pulled up, but I didn't... Um, it's just why you're Christine, pulling that up, Christine. Christine. Why are you pulling her up too? I just don't understand why now we're getting Thor, Love and Thunder, Natalie Portman's like the stars. Like these characters were just anyway. Go on. Well, there, there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot of comics here, so yeah, I know, but still. So All right, go ahead. anyway, as uh, um, Ms. Chavez comes to the universe, they're doing the talk. Her, Doctor Strange, Wong, they're figuring everything out. Who are you? Where are you? What are you? That whole thing. Right. You have your typical Marvel banter there, which is fun, tongue in cheek, and just that 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 fun stuff back and forth. Right. The bad thing uh, too is that uh, not only does America get sucked into our universe, our multiverse here, but uh, so does Dead Strange. So she has a dead body of Doctor Strange, which he buries, and just like, well, you know, it's not, it's not the weirdest thing I buried. <laughs> So uh, and they continue on to talk about more of the theory of the the multiverse. Um, Doctor Strange has a he does he, excuse because he doesn't know too much about it. He goes well maybe I'll ask somebody. I I think I know somebody. And guess who he asks? Scarlet Witch. He goes to Wanda Maximoff and says, Hey, what do you know about the multiverse? And she has she's living in uh, at the end of Wandaverse. She's in like this little shack in a beautiful orchid orchard. Excuse me, uh, orchard. Of, uh, or, yeah, uh, orchard of just you know uh, apple trees everywhere. It's wonderful, you know. They're they're uh, blossoming. It's it's a great uh, environment to be in. And he has that dialogue, and he says, "Hey, you know, I had this girl. Uh, she's jumps dimensions. A demon was after her. What do you know about the multiverse?" And then he finds out that she was the one that sent that. That she is the one that's been studying the multiverse. She has uh, the book called The Darkhold, which is like, not not like a Necronomicon, but like, it's a dark. Necronomicon. It's a Necronomicon. Well, Necronomicon's like the Book of the Dead. This is like just the book of like the dark magic. Okay. You know, so. Same, same, Raimi, same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He does love his books, doesn't he? He does. So of there's course, also a book of a... good in here. Is it's so the opposite. Oh my book. god, of course there is. Uh, okay, so... Gotta combat that. So, after he finds out that Wanda is after America, uh, he's like, ooh, well, geez, I just discovered the enemy is, is here, and also uh, she knows that America is here, and that we have her, and so um, this whole thing is great. It's the development of Wanda as the as the villain, as the bad guy. Mm -hmm. Because she had said, they, hey, listen, I was playing nice until now, Strange. Like, I was being fair, I was trying to be low-key and discreet, and to keep you guys out of it. Now you guys are getting involved, and if you get in my way, I'm telling you, not asking, it's going to suck. And Strange does strange things because he's Dr. Strange and says, no, I can't let you do that. And... The war starts. So why don't people just leave her alone? I'm sorry to cut you off, but like that's kind of really irritating to me. I mean, like I kind of put myself into her on that because in WandaVision, right? What did she really do that was so bad? She took over a small town that nobody really cared about. Everybody seemed happy until everybody, meaning the outside world, the government stepped in to try to take it over the people inside the village didn't seem too happy they were until the government came they in. were not they were crying they they, they found out later on that they were being held against their will and this is enough another, another precedence that has been set for this movie because uh it shows that wanda doesn't really know what her actions she thinks that she's doing good and that she's being right but she's actually destroying everything around her she finds that more in, in the end of this movie because again she feels, and we're seeing a lot more of this in Marvel, by the way, too, that her, that as a villain, that she is not wrong. She feels that she is justified in her in her actions. They are excusable, and she has a right to do what she's doing. 
I feel she's justified in her actions. I was completely on her side in WandaVision. I'm not being facetious here. I'm being serious. Like, sure. it, it, I mean, like her her husband or lo- I don't know if they Vision. were married. Vision, yeah, but I don't think we're married. But uh, the love of her together. life, they're... the love of her life gets murdered by Thanos. Boom, he's never coming back. Twice. Wars over twice. She she's broken hearted. She wants to be left alone. Is how she wanted to be left alone questionable? I'll give you that, sure, because you told me that people were crying and they, but she wanted to be left alone and they won't leave her alone. And now in this movie, you're telling me Strange is like, hey, we're trying to figure this out, demon thing. And she's just like, Brr. and he's just like, wait a minute, you're the villain. And she's like, leave me alone. And it's like, just leave her alone. Why can't we leave her alone? Well, yeah, I'll agree with you to a point. At the other part, when she took over a town, she messed around Jordan and she found a witch. That's on her. I, 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 okay, fine. There's because she found a witch. There's a witch living in. Uh, was that was that was that Wanda. witch living? Was that witch? Oh, okay, talk about herself. Okay, because I was no, talking... not Scarlet Witch. Uh, uh, what the hell is her name? Uh, man, I gotta dig in. The bad witch, the, the the bad witch in the show. But but was that bad witch already in the town when everything happened, or did she come to the town after? Wanda took it over. I imagine that she was living in the town because she didn't know what she was dealing with until after. Okay. Uh, Catherine Hahn, excuse me, as yes. uh, Aggie, right, Agnes? Yeah, I always know her as a bad mom's girl. Yes, yeah. I mean, she's a character actress, and she's just yeah. lovely. Yeah, no, I, I find her charming. I find her fun. So, okay. So nobody leaves her alone. Now she's the villain. She's in her she's in her Scarlet Witch garb that I saw on the posters and trailers, right? Looking awesome, too. I yeah. mean, it, it's intimidating, especially... And props to Elizabeth Olsen. She really does play that character so well. Oh, she does? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, you know, because it's intimidating because, again, she feels like she's very much like... Uh, in the right of doing everything, all these, everything that she's doing. And it's scary when you have this person who's acting in passion and it's unstoppable. Well, right now I'm on her side. Yeah. You could see it in her eyes. That's just like, Ooh, geez. Well, the other part of it too, is that you could tell that strange and Wong are like, they see her, they want to agree. They're like, Oh, geez. Okay. You're, you're obviously hurting and you're right. But again, the way you're kind of doing it, do you really need to go ahead and kill all these people? Like, do you need to, to ruin everyone else's lives to do this? And that's they're, they're trying to point that out, like, hey, you're grieving. But that's a typical man telling the woman, calm down, right? No, I don't think so at all. Like, I, I, I think they're trying to establish a new Avengers again, maybe. And they're trying to... Get everybody together. Get everybody back on the same team. Get everybody on this on the same side. That's what I think deep down is going on. I don't think it's no uh, calm down woman thing. I don't think so at all. Because she's arguably one of the most powerful ones too. With Strange, right? I mean, Scarlet Witch is absolutely. Yeah, she's pretty high up there. Now, um, as as the movie goes on, you're talking about how she sent the demon. I, I'm assuming we get this at the end, but uh, why did she send the demon in the beginning? Because she she had the demon after America Chavez because America Chavez has the power to jump universes. She, Wanda, wants to absorb that power so she herself can also jump universes. The reason why is because she wants to live in the universe uh, where she is a mother to her children. The fake children that she made up in WandaVision. Yes. The fake children that she had with Vision that uh, in, in WandaVision... She has believed and made true, and she has found that there are other realities where she is living this truth. We don't know how true uh, true these these realities are. I have not seen Vision around in these in the realities, so I don't know if he's the father in those as he as he is in this one or whatever the case is on that. We'll find out maybe later, but she believes it to be true. Uh, that she has two kids, and she is determined to jump universes, dreamwalking, they call it, uh, to find the reality. Oh, I'm sorry, dreamwalking is where she her body is in one reality, but she can use the dark hold to manifest herself and embody or take over, possess someone in, in another universe. 
Oh wow! Okay, wow. She, she can. Ooh. Yeah. So so she can just hop between multiverses. Well, I mean, I mean, clearly she's going after these kids because this is only part of her love with Vision that she has. Back again, crazy at this point now. I'm 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 still on her side. I mean, that's fine. Uh, but the, but the children are made up, and plus Vision can't have children. He's a he's a he's a robot. But um, okay. No, no. Uh, it, it gets to this point again where you're on her side until she goes too far, and. Um, it's again, it's a great point in the movie because she, you come to a point where the only person that can defeat her is herself. Right. And you have to make that situation happen. They do. We'll, we'll talk about it at the end, but right now we're at the hunt. Wanda okay. is done giving a shit and she is hunt. She is after America Chavez. She goes to, um, the sorcerer's temple, uh, and just starts wreaking habit. We have a huge action scene of just magic. She's just throwing chaos magic at them. They're trying to do whatever they can with their portal magic. It is a big action scene. Looks fantastic. Puts Harry Potter to shame. I don't even know what movie you're talking about. No, I like Harry Potter magic. You know. No, no, I, anyway. exactly. After this movie, you're thinking, what magic? This is right. Yeah, it was. There was a lot again, and it's really cool just because. Everyone's in it, you know. All the characters are doing their thing, um, and it's it's fast too. So it's not like one character is kind of taking their time and encant yeah. you know, enchanting a spell um, like that. But it's a lot happening at once. Okay. And uh, so obviously fights back and forth, back and forth. Uh, we got to act drastically, and the only way to do that obviously is America gets spooked, activates the multiverse. And away they go. Uh, her and Strange just they they pop in there to make a quick escape. Wong stays behind, takes care of real Scarlet Witch, and uh, Strange and Chavez go hopping through the multiverse. The, the first part of this is the part that you see, the part that we all wanted to see, where it actually was really cool, where they first go in, and we get to see them jump through like i don't know 10 8 maybe different universes and the way that they they the 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 noise the sound effect and the visual effect of each jump was pretty cool because every universe is different you get one where obviously his face is all kind of cut up we have the paint world where they they jumped and they were all paint uh there was a high tech world there there was a whole bunch of like just different worlds that they were just jumping through just boom 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 Boom, boom, and it slows down, kind of like a like a wheel of fortune, until okay. eventually they go boom, and they they land in in world eight three eight, which is like this utopian green world, big skyscrapers, but like with vines growing on them, very lush, very peaceful, utopian. World eight three eight. Yes. Okay. Why is it called eight three eight? Just because we find that later on in this world that. Uh, the it, which is being uh, the Sorcerer Supreme in this world is uh, Mordo from Strange One. Uh, who's that? Uh, what's her face? No, no, Baron Mordo. Uh, he was the nemesis. He was the bad guy in Doctor Strange One. He's the, with okay. the long dreadlocks. He wears green, and to Doctor Strange is red. Okay, I follow you. I know what you're talking about. Uh, and. Uh, yeah, he so he was the the nemesis in one. He was when he was kind of jealous of Strange, and so he tried to overtake him, in uh, jealous bits of rage and stuff like that. In this universe, though, in eight three eight, Doctor Strange died, uh, because he used the dark hold to kill Thanos. Ah, so before the blip or anything, he used the dark hold to kill Thanos, but he knew that once he used the dark hold that he was going to be corrupted, and so he sacrificed himself. He asked uh, the group to kill him because he knew that he would become corrupted. So in this universe, Strange is dead, and uh, he sacrificed himself for the greater good. He has a big statue. Uh, so he's... Okay, yeah. okay, okay, so he's a hero. But he said he wanted the group to kill him, so I'm assuming like... Cap, Iron Man, Thor, he asked those people to kill him? Well, Jordan, yeah, the moment has come. And uh, Professor X? The Illuminati. 
Strange uh, had formed the Illuminati uh, because he knew this this would time was come. He had studied the multiverse. He'd studied the effects and and knew uh, the cost of what was going to happen. So he formed the Illuminati, a culmination of uh, the multiverses and Earth's greatest heroes. You have, uh, of course, you have Professor X. Um, you have Captain Carter, Agent Carter. Peggy Carter. Peggy Carter. She's back. Yes, but she is instead Captain Carter. She is uh, from What If. Instead of it being Captain America, she was injected with the super serum, and she's from the UK. So the the shield is a big uh, Union Jack. Um, so we need to watch What If. I didn't think What If was something we needed to see. There's, I think, well, maybe two or three little callbacks to What Ifs, and I don't think they're really a big deal other than this little Easter egg. Okay, so 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 Peggy Carter is Captain Carter. Okay, yeah, um, she comes uh, in, and uh, uh, who else was in there? Oh, oh, the big one was uh, Reed Richards. Oh, uh, Mr. Mr. Fant- Mr. Fantastic! Yeah, played by John Krasinski. John Krasinski, Jim, Jim from The Office. He's playing Mr. Fantastic? Yeah, he looks great, too. Oh, my. That is awesome. And then, uh, who we have? We have another another Miss Marvel, um, uh, a different one that wasn't. I think she was actually from Nova Corp, uh, instead of it being from uh, um, Brie Larson's whatever the hell one. Captain Marvel. Yeah, okay, okay, wait a minute. So I want to talk about Jim some more. So, I mean, like. They they have already established, meaning they, meaning Disney has already established that they are going to do a Fantastic Four movie in this MCU verse. Um, so I mean, like they are they are saying that 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 Jim is going to be Mister Fantastic, and this is the first introduction to Fantastic Four. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is going to be exciting. Yeah, and is I, is it Patrick Stewart again too? Oh yeah, he he's in there, and he's in the classic yellow. Um, oh no, shit! The really? classic yellow floating uh, uh, chair too. Wow, so uh, it, it's it's this eight three eight world, just a collection of different times. Because wouldn't Captain Carter be dead by now? Would it? Will Xavier pretty much be dead? Isn't uh, Xavier anything's dead? possible in the multiverse? And again, they kind okay. of loosely go over it because, I, and we'll get to it uh, as well. But again, they have Captain Carter, Captain Marvel. Uh, but again, I think it's, uh, I'm blowing it up. Yeah, rather than Carol Danvers, I think it was. The engineer, uh, not Monica, Monica Rambo's mom. Oh, she, she's in this? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah. In the movie, Captain Marvel, the, 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 the engineer on the planet that, uh, yeah. Her daughter, her daughter plays right. Monica Rambo. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She's I'm in there. You. And then Black Bolt. Black Bolt. Who the heck is Black Bolt? He's, uh, he's in the Inhumans. I see. Uh, we didn't. Re- did- that's that's okay. Okay, we never reviewed any humans or Eternals. Yeah, that's that's fine. Uh, those okay. are just kind of whatever. But he's he's in here. Um, Black Bolt. For those who don't know, he it's kind of a, of a surprise. Uh, but he doesn't talk because he he has a supersonic voice. That's actually <sighs> how how Strange died. Uh, this how eight three eight Strange died is that he killed Thanos. He's on his knees and he's getting ready to die. Black Bolt comes up and whispers, "I'm sorry," and obviously the the because of his supersonic voice, it it disintegrates, it destroys him, evaporates him. Okay, all right. So now this team, I'm assuming, is going to come together to stop the Scarlet Witch, or this team is a actually a bad team. Uh, well, actually, so Strange comes in and he's just like, all right, good, whatever, Illum- Illuminati, that's great. Oh, by the way, the, all the robots that are in this world, too, are, are all uh, operated by Ultron. Ultron's not dead? He is peaceful. Oh, gee. James, James Spader's the voice, too? No, they don't talk about Ultron. The, the robots, the guards, yeah. are, are built in Ultron's image, and they even say, uh, like, you know... Something about old Ultron, but no, this is a world where uh, Jarvis actually had had successfully created the security system Ultron, and yeah, it's uh, well, yeah. So this is like, what if everything worked out? Kind right. of right. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. I'm saying, but like, 
besides the death of Doctor Strange, it sounds like this is a world as of right now that I want to be a part of. So like this, this is good. This is where I think the big like the biggest gripe that I have comes into this around this part. Okay, uh, is because while this is going on, we have uh, Wong and Scarlet Witch doing their thing in our universe, which is called 616, I believe. So our real world is 616. Yeah, we are 616. Okay. And currently Strange and America Chavez are in 838. Okay. So in 616, Wong is battling Scarlet Witch. Not really. Wong is being held captive by Scarlet Witch while she is going through the dark hold to try to find where uh, which multiverse they went to um, so that she could dreamwalk into that universe and fight them and take them you know try to try to beat them okay while she, while she is in a uh, trance uh one of the sorcerers uh came up and uh, with a free hand was able to destroy the dark hold of uh, the book that wanda was using because she's in a trance she's you know in in her head so they were able to kind of come up real quick snag the book and then stab it with uh whatever knife they have killing the book and themselves at the same time well oh, so they killed the horcrux yeah they killed gotcha. the horcrux basically yeah gotcha. so being left uh without a book to jump between multiverses and with giving her a means to check her kid she wanda freaks out tries to torture Wong a bit more. He says, so that was just a copy that the actual uh, dark hold is actually inscribed in the walls of a temple that's over here. And she says, okay, take me there. And so there they go to a temple in the Himalayas somewhere on top of a mountain and inscribed in this, in the walls is uh, like the throne of the Scarlet Witch and is actual the dark hold. So she can sit in this little throne in this temple and she can basically conjure the Book of the Darkhold and do what she was doing before. She can view the different multiverses and she can dream walk in these different multiverses and inhabit any body that she fe feels fit and uh, control the multiverse that way. Kind of like, like, like a puppeteer. Yeah, I got you. Okay. I mean, yawn, but okay. I get, yeah, right. So, jumping back to 838. Strange is in handcuffs talking to the Illuminati. He also, in, in this world, sees Christine, Rachel McAdams, who has him and America locked up in these uh, glass kind of cubes for observation. They talk saying that, um, well, in this universe, Strange obviously couldn't put his ego aside to get with the girl either. Uh, and he kind of sees this pattern um, that in every universe... Um, there is a many number of different possibilities that uh, of who you are and like what you went through, but one thing seems to be constant: he doesn't get the girl, and that's just because he's a dick, and he realizes that later on. Okay. Um, so uh, he goes to court in front of the Illuminati. The Illuminati is just like, uh, and he, by the way, he's just telling them the entire time, like, hey, Juan is after us, you know, she's going to kill all of us, blah, 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 this is what happened. The Illuminati is not having it. They say, no, actually, we're more concerned about you. Our strange told us that the, our greatest threat is, would be himself, would be you. That's why we killed him. That's why we were made this group, the Illuminati, so that we could uh, stop other strangers. Uh, we think that you are the threat. Oh, okay. Twist. Obvious, but twist. Okay. Strange is just like... And of course, Mordo, by the way, is loving this. Uh, yeah, of course. His nemesis from the first movie, who's in the Illuminati. Uh, Strange is... I was challenging this, saying, no, you guys are crazy. You guys are, you know, Wanda's going to come. She's going to do this. Okay, Strange, we'll see what kind of strange you are, type of thing. Uh, fast forward. Wanda obviously finds them in this universe. She comes in, inhabits that universe's Wanda Maximoff. Oh, okay. Yeah. Obvious. Yeah, okay. kind of crazy. And then flies there and just, Jordan, the Sam Raimi effect. This is why you wanted to see this movie. Okay. 
Why because, do I want to see this movie? Uh, the Illuminati, who I had said told you before, all those characters. Yeah. They all die. They all oh. die in the bloodiest of ways. They all die very quickly. Professor X. Everybody. Everybody Jim comes from the in. office. I'm telling you, <laughs> Wanda comes in because she's just like, oh, I'm, I'm here for Strange and, and for Chavez. You have to go through us first. And she's like, all, all right, I asked. Jordan, she, she goes through all of them easily. First one is, is Black Bolt. Um, which, by the way, th- this is a big gripe because Reed Richards, the smartest man in the world, uh, kind of, you know, just like, well, you're no match for Black Bolt here as long as he talks to you. And that's when she goes, okay, well, I'll just take away his mouth then. And uh, it cuts to the scene where Black Bolt is in his full costume. And then suddenly he, like, doesn't have a mouth anymore. He kind of freaks out. He tries to say something, but because his mouth is closed, the sonic waves bounce around in his head, and his head blows up. Oh wow! Okay, yep, that's very same Raimi. I mean, I mean, just like a almost like a like a gunshot wound, you know, just right. Boom. So suddenly, the 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 shift uh, of tone in this movie changes real quick. Jordan, it was fantastic. You could hear the the audience gasp. It was wonderful. Uh, then everyone just dies. Like she right. just fights. She fights uh, Captain Carter, cuts her in half with the shield. She fights. Uh, I mean, uh, um, oh, Reed Richards. He, uh, uh, or whatever. Uh, he, Mister Fantastic. He he goes into his stretchy mode. Uh, she cuts him up like string cheese. It it, it was a whole thing. Um, and yes, yeah, she but kills the- Professor X too. She actually X tries to go into her mind and do. Professor X things. Yeah. And she breaks his neck in his mind so that, he, that when he, he does it in real life, it's crazy. Well, okay. So I'm going to tell you right now, hopefully I say this correctly from what you're telling me. Sounds really great. And no pun intended. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, however, though, I think the reason why this happens this way with the brutality is because this isn't the real world, right? This is, this is 838. Our universe 616 already has these people. So all this is doing is introducing us to who these people are going to be in our reality. That's what's going to happen. Nobody cares about 838. We're never going to go back to 838 after this. They are definitely introducing that the multiverse can have – that doesn't have a limit. That the multiverse can be stretched, like Mister Fantastic. No, no, I, I get it, but I hope I'm explaining myself well. I'm saying that the creators, the filmmakers, they know we don't care about eight three eight. They know that we don't want to spend the next six phases in eight three eight. Let's just kill these characters off because they don't matter really anyway. They're going to matter in six one six. Oh yeah, see, there's, see, I'm trying to say. I so, get it. There's there's a lot of inf- universes out there so yeah go ahead and go ahead and right so one. having them do it this sounds great because that's why they do it in such a brutal way because you know these actors who are playing these characters will not signed on just to do a one-off you know what i mean so everyone dies everyone dies um yes every everyone dies everyone dies it's it's a it's a great part right there um they do oh jeez. What happens then? Uh, does want to take America back to? She gets the upper hand. Strange has to. He gets trapped. Strange has to go to a different universe. Oh no! Yeah, Wanda wins. She throws Strange into uh, into one universe because she can take. She takes control of America Chavez's powers through the multiverse. She sends Strange into into one. She's like, all right, well, away with you. I'm done with you. And then she takes herself and America Chavez uh, back into 616. Okay. So we're left with 616 Universe, Scarlet Witch, America Chavez, uh, Chavez, uh, Wong are all back here. They're at the temple. And Wanda is going to be starting to extract the, uh, pull the power from America Chavez, right? While this is happening, Strange is in his different universe. And he's trying to obviously figure out 
where the heck am I? How can I get out of here? The first thing he tries to do is let me try to find my strange. Uh, oh, he's with Rachel McAdams, too. He gets uh, brought with Christine. And again, she's only there so that he learns about himself and, you know, that, that growth. Um, so she, 838 Christine, Rachel McAdams gets sent with him on this other journey. Okay. In this universe that they are in, uh, they are in collapsing universes. They explain that the the danger of jumping between multiverses is that if 616 person jumps into 838 long enough, the realities will start to merge. Ah, classic. So like that's like that purple stuff. Yes. Uh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And now because there's no TVA, as we heard from Loki, uh, to prune these these lines or correct these, there's no one to regulate it, and so these realities will eventually just merge and collapse together. The reality that we are in now, that Strange gets sent to, that uh, the universe that uh, Scarlet Witch sent him to, is in one such uh, timeline where two universes are collapsing into each other, and so buildings are. You know, uh, some of them are horizontal, some of them are vertical. They're they're flying, they're dissolving, they're crashing. The world is in chaos, and he is going to find this versions, uh, this universe is strange to get some answers. Uh, eventually, he finds them. It's it's a weird Sam Raimi part because this strange is very corrupted. He got a hold of the dark hold, and he's just been. He's a he's a dark strange. Oh, yeah, dark strange. And he's it. Uh, he's just been sitting here destroying other stranges because other strangers come to him, you know, and be like, "Hey, are you the one that, that knows about the multiverse?" He goes, "Yes," and he just you know will kill him and send him in the multiverse. And there's a whole thing about the dreams in there too that's really not important. There's a musical battle that some people liked, some people didn't like. Um, a music battle. Uh, by that I mean they're in. Uh, the, the dueling stranges are in a room together. A uh, good strange versus evil strange. Oh. Who, who, evil strange has three eyes, by the way. Of course, because of Illuminati. Yeah, okay. Uh, and there are uh, music sheets in the room, and because there are notes on the sheet, there are, those are technically runes, and so strange pulls them off of the sheet and uses them as projectiles. And so they are fighting with music notes back and back and forth at each other. Buddy, you're losing me. <laughs> I would be folding my arms at this point. Like, this does not sound fun. A lot of people were probably doing the same thing, Jordan. I'm not going to try to defend that one. I, I thought it was, was fun and creative. It, it was dumb and quirky, with very, which is a very Raimi to me. Uh, but, yeah, I could see why a lot of people uh, would, would be weird about this because right. it was off. Like, it was very... Off, off. <laughs> you would say, yeah. It's it, it's didn't seem to like match the movie. Okay, especially yeah. in the scene that we're in because it's a very dark scene, uh, both visually and in tone. Because this is the part where he learns, where Strange learns that he his hubris is his biggest enemy. He cannot fully achieve greatness because he gets it in his own way constantly and this evil strange in front of him shows him that if he continues the path like that's the dark side okay. this is what will happen if he continues to go this route but uh to give you the other side of that outside of this building that they're battling which there are windows in you see christine you see rachel mcadams there and it's very light very bright outside the other side, Jordan. Okay. So visually, it shows that contrast a lot. Okay. A lot of light and dark, a lot of him, strange, that is walking into lighter areas at this point. Um, a lot of that movie uh, had him walking into dark at the beginning and then back into light at the, at the start. So uh, let's just cut to it. Strange, yeah, let's cut to it. Strange obviously uh, uh, beats this strange right here, but doesn't know how to get back into 616 to help uh 
to help everyone beat everybody, right? He can't jump multiverses, and America uh, Chavez is, is in 616. So I don't know how he's like, oh, how do I do it? Well, he killed Evil Strange, and he still has the Darkhold from this world. So he thought, all right, well, I guess I'll use the Darkhold, and I'll dreamwalk into 616. And I will use that body as an avatar to defeat Wanda in 616. Uh, he needs an avatar, a body to do that, and he needs a sorcerer to do that. So, who can he inhabit in 616? Uh, 616, who can inhabit? Rachel. No, Wong. Close. Spider-Man. He inhabits the dead body of himself that he buried earlier. Ow. Ow. Okay. So now we have Zombie Strange, superhero Zombie Strange in 616. Uh, here's another weird thing, too, is that because he's a zombie and because he's breaking the rules of like the magic and using dark arts, the souls are are haunting him, uh, are taking him as Zombie Strange, and he he was able to... It's a weird thing. He's able to, like, to control the souls... And so when you see the trailer clip of like Zombie Strange and he has like this cloak of darkness that's very like soul esque with like arms and hands reaching out of him, that's like the souls that he's controlling. Um, he goes in there, they fight, he wins. La- Wanda learns the lesson that um, her actions are causing her to be a monster. She, oh, she finally learns. Okay. She gets in. I, I'm just cutting out all the action parts, and because you already know what's going to happen. Right. Oh, Wong falls down. Wong gets up. Strange falls down. Strange gets up. Oh, America's going to lose her powers. Well, America doesn't lose her powers, y- and you you know where it's going to end. The big part right. of it is is that Wanda goes into a dream walking state in one of them, and she sees um, because in that world, Wanda is happy with her kids. Like, it's a happy family. And she, it, the Scarlet Witch now, is interrupting that. She's right. breaking into this house, completely sabotaging this family. The two kids that she loves are scared of her, completely petrified of this woman, of the Scarlet Witch. And she's just, uh, you know, the woman, the Scarlet Witch, is like, no, 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 I love you. You know, what are you doing? This is mommy. And the kids are like, no, you're scary. You know, mommy's over there on the floor because you came into the house and blasted her away. Right. And that's when Wanda realizes, like, oh, my God, I'm a monster. Um, I'm bad. And she basically just get, gets the hell out of there real quick. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, this sounds predictable at this point, right? Yeah. She gets out of there real quick. Lessons been learned by everybody. Strange gets back into 616. Uh, America's living with Wong at the Sorcerer Sanctum um, and helping rebuild there. By the way, if for, any, for any questions, America Chavez does not have any alternates. Uh, she seems to be the only person in the multiverse that is one of a kind on her own. She knows this oh. because she doesn't have dreams, and she's searched for other versions of her uh, in the other universes, and there aren't any. Okay. No so, reaction from me on that one. All right, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, I think is I, that it? I think I got it all. Okay. I think I did. I think I got the the most of it, at least. Uh, yeah. Uh, Bruce Campbell's in here. He makes a cameo. Of course eight, he does. In eight three eight, uh, he's a hot dog vendor. The Papa, the Pizza Papa, or something like that. He always gets paid. Um, so that was fun. He was a uh, Bruce was also the end credits. Uh, spoiler there too, which was dumb to st- so you don't need to stay for the end credits. It's just Bruce Campbell punching himself. Being Bruce Campbell, yeah, like a five minute bit or a five second bit. I'm sorry. At gotcha. the end, uh, at the end of the movie, the end credit, everything's all wrapped up and nice. Strange is, um, you know, feeling good about himself. He walks out of the sanctum sanctorium. Uh, and walking onto the street of New York, and suddenly he stops and gets to his falls on his knees, writhing in pain. Goes ah, and he yells up into the sky, and then reveals that he has a third eye as well. Oh no! Bum, bum, bum. Now you should have just ended it there, which would have been great. But the right. end credit scene, 
has him walking around, and Charlize Theron jumps up. She's Why the she she's the new hidden character because she, she's a one of the the multiverse warriors, and she she jumps in with her little purple suit, and she says, "Are you Doctor Strange? We got somewhere to go." She she whips out her little sword. She cuts a hole, uh, obviously in the fabric of time. And there's just like a rip in the multiverse there. Strange says, all right, let's go. His third eye opens up and they both jump into the multiverse. Roll credits. Yay, excited. <laughs> this sounds bad. Like so, everything, I mean, like they're not going to lie to you. I mean, like you, you actually had my, and this probably would happen in the movie theater. You had my intention all the way until after everybody got killed. Yeah, yeah. I, I had you all the way up until, yeah. And I was I was bored because that just sounds very generic, very uh, been there, done that. Um, I don't need to see this again kind of attitude. Yeah, here's the thing is that this movie was very underwhelming. Right. Um, I think people wanted more. I certainly did. I wanted more multiverse. I wanted more madness. But so we just kind of got a Doctor Strange story. Right. That is going to be a big deal for no reason. Because that's what some of these side movies are, is that you don't think these movies are big movies. But in reality, they actually are. No, I don't think this movie did... This movie didn't do anything that the TV shows didn't already do. Okay, mark my words. We'll see what happens. Well, what's happening is... Really, all I'm getting is further establishment of the multiverse and a bunch of new characters. Uh, still, I, I've said it again for almost every Marvel thing that we've done, movie or show, is that they're just adding in these new characters constantly. Boom, boom, boom. And it's it's cool. Like uh, We get to see more of the two kids in this right. one. So I wonder if we're going to see more of them, which I'm sure we will. Uh, the girl who played America Chavez, great, wonderful. I think she's she's She'll be great in the universe. I, I think the character is awesome, too. It's a great um, bridge to make things just kind of happen. It's a great foil to kind of leave things off on something. It, you know, just to have this person just be like, okay, where do you want to go? Boom. And uh, suddenly we have mutants in the world now. We can make that happen now. So I like that these characters are being brought in. Uh, I think it's a little crazy um, the way that uh, some of these characters are being brought in, like the whole Charlie Theron at the end of that, that seemed a bit abrupt right. and like unneeded. You didn't really need to do that because one, you're not telling me anything. Like we just had a movie about the multiverse, and so them going back into the multiverse or like the realm of mm. where like like Dormammu had lived, it's not like anything new. Which again, this movie was not anything new. I didn't leave right. with any new information. I didn't learn anything new about any of the characters. I didn't see Vision at all in this movie. Like, um, that would have been something to... So is it a small bag then? I, I It's just under one... Well, no, because I, I give it a medium just because, like, the action, the action was fantastic. Like, honestly, it really was. Like, there was a lot of it. I got to see a zombie sorcerer. You know, like, and a good one, too. He was a good guy and do a bunch of, like, cool stuff. You know, it it looks great. Flat out, um, Wanda is was the star of this movie. She is fantastic. Um, I, if she gets her own movie, which I hope she does, I, I can't wait to see that. I think she's a great character. But, yeah, um, everything about it was just kind of fan service. It was just kind of giving you more sugar on top of already pretty big Sunday, you know, like it's just a lot. It's, it, it's a lot without giving me anything. It was a fun watch, but that actually, that's probably a, the best review right there. Uh, quote Eric right here. It was a fun watch dot, 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 but, and end of the review right there. Well, I'm sure it'll be a fun watch coming up in the future because while we were doing this show, a big announcement came across my phone. So hopefully everybody who's listening will hear it here first. Sony has officially announced a new Spider-Man trilogy with Tom Holland, effective immediately. Yay. More, Yay. more, more Spider-Man. More Spider-Man. 
or Spider-Man. Uh, my myself, I'm just gonna go with you. I'm just gonna go with you. Uh, I'll make it short and sweet. Uh, I'm I'm sure since this is a Marvel movie, the action uh, is amazing. Uh, you had me. You had me. For somebody who's never seen the movie yet, you had me entertained. I was questioning a lot of fun things, but then when it got pretty predictable from what you were telling me, I was checked out. I, it didn't sound like it was entertaining at that point. So if someone were to, to say, hey, uh, Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness, sum it up. Uh, everything that you need to know, I would just say Strange has three eyes now. Uh, is a character named America Chavez who can jump between multiverses. And Wanda is a bad guy, but she's, got, but she's one of those bad guys that's just like, yeah, she, she's kind of right. Gotcha. Which is another right. thing in, in Marvel, right? Like Warmonger, uh, Thanos. Uh, yeah, um, oh, I know there was there's one more uh, in uh, um, in Thor that I'm forgetting too, where it's just like, these guys are like, they got a point, right? <laughs> right. Well, that's what makes a villain good is 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 having a point, you know, because you don't want a villain to be evil just to be evil. You want to be able to actually understand what they're coming from, because that makes a good villain. Yeah. To make a bad villain is you're as evil because you're evil. So I mean that's not good. But this episode was good. I mean we were kind of skeptical on how this was going to go. This was fun. This is not going to be a new norm for everybody who is listening. This is. This is a very rare occasion that this has happened. Uh, but, of course, we'll be back next week like we always are for another awesome episode. However, until then, make sure you keep us download, downloading us with you guys' podcast at podbean.com or wherever you get your podcast from. We are on and now, and including the Sony – Sony, sorry. I'm thinking of Sony. Now we're on Samsung-only Android thing. So that's a new podcast. I'm saying it every single week because it doesn't make any sense to me. But you're we're doing, on it. You're doing a great job. <laughs> I just don't understand why you would have a Samsung. Pl- the only way you can listen to the podcast on a Samsung podcast is if you have a Samsung smart TV. That makes no sense. <laughs> I just I don't understand it. I mean, thank you, I guess, that we're on it. But nobody's listening to our show through their TV. I, I But anyway, but everybody, thank you so much for downloading us, and we'll be back for another awesome episode. Have a good night.